we can start. Hello, thank you for coming to this talk about OBS, Open Build Service. First of all, let me introduce you to the people who is going to talk to you today. My name is Sarai. I'm a web developer in OBS. David is also a web developer. Frank works in the backend. And Marco is in charge of OSC, our command line client. Some of our colleagues really believe that we work like this. We live in the Canary Islands in Spain, and they think we are all day long lying on the beach, sunbathing with our laptop, but it's not like this at all. We, we work in a normal office. We share it with all the Canarian guys, and it is quite normal, as you see, and uh, full of chameleons, of course. And this is the agenda for today. We are going to talk about what is new in OBS. First, David and I are going to talk about the web application. Then Frank is going to explain us what's new in the backend. And finally, Marco is going to tell us the news uh, about the command line client. Well, um, Sometimes we, we develop some features that are so big or so complex that we need exhaustive testing for them. So we need some users to test them, but they are not in a final version. So how can we do that? We have for that the beta program, where we don't show the, those features to all the users, but only to, to those users who want to join the beta program and test what's new, and all the features that are ongoing development. It's very easy to join. Any of you can join right now if you want. You can just have to log in in OBS, go to the profile page, to your user page, and then on the left side, you have a link to join the beta program. From that moment, you can see all the new features that we are delivering. And you can start working with them in your daily work. And it's going to be very useful for us, because maybe you can find some bugs, or you can re realize that some workflow has changed and is not good for you. So please join the Bota program. It's very easy. And every time we deliver some new features, we are going to announce them in our blog. Have a look uh, to it uh, every two weeks or every month. Probably you will see something new there. And it's very important for us that you test them and open an issue if you find something strange. If you join the beta program right now, you can see that we have a refreshed user interface. You can see that most of the, of the pages has look a different way. And why do, do we revamp the user interface? We have many reasons for that. And the, mess, the most important one is that the technology we, we were using is now obsolete, uh, and it is not longer maintained. So for this reason, we are re revamping it. We have to choose a new technology. But there are more reasons. Another one is that we want our user interface to be mobile friendly. We also thought that it was time to make it more modern and a bit nicer. And it's also useful for us to rewrite the code a bit because it was a bit chaotic sometimes. And we need them to be tidy and, cl and clean to to be able to refactor it in the future or maybe changing the workflow. And it's easier if we have everything tidy and, tidy and clean. Well, we, ha we did some proof of concept with some workflows, some frameworks, sorry. We tried Semantic UI. We also tried Bootstrap and Bulma. 
And finally, we, we realized that mm, the best for us was Bootstrap. The reasons are, first of all, there is a big community behind Bootstrap. It is a stable project. Uh, it's reliable. It's well documented. It has all the features we needed. And some of, the, of, of our colleagues mm, had experience with it. So we choose it. This is a, I'm going to show you some of the pages ha that has changed. Um, this is the old main page, the home page of OBS. And now you can see how cool is it nowadays. A lot of change, right? Amazing. Don't you think so? I don't think so. <laughs> yes, we it has changed a bit. We have new icons, we have the the layout is wider, we have more empty space between the elements, but it's not really a big change, as you can see. But it was what what we wanted to, to achieve. We didn't want to disrupt your daily work. We just wanted to keep it like it was, but it has changed a lot behind. The code has changed a lot. We have migrated a lot of things. So for us, we are getting what we wanted. This is another example. This is the page of the project. And it looked like this before, and now it looks like this. Yes, a bit better, not bad. Um, most of the of the pages are uh, migrated like like this, keeping what we had before, but making it m more clean. And now I'm going to show you some of the pages that really changed because we thought it was necessary or it was a bit confusing before. And the repositories page is one good example. It was like this. We had uh, some listing, we list some all the repository names, um, a bit more information. But now we have we are displaying this in boxes, so we we are using all the free space on the right, so it, it looks better now. This is another good example. This is the pools page, and this is. It, it was a list also, and now it looks like this. It's colorful, all the information is divided into sections, and it, we also can select for periods of times there, so it has improved a lot. And also, have, we did some good job, I think, with the members, the group members tab. Before it was a table for only one column or two if you are admin. And now we can see all the users like this. We focus on the avatar and the name, and we it, they are side by side to, to use better the space. And we did it. We have our application, and now it's mobile friendly. It looks very well in the mobile. And you can see everything I, can, I have just shown you um, if you join the beta program. So please join. Please give us feedback. Please let us know if you have found something wrong or you suggest any change. Um, that's all from my side. Next, David, I'm going to tell you more interesting things about OBS. Thank you. Thank you, Sarai. I look like a singer with that. OK. So now we have the status, status report API. I mean, in the last few years, we were trying to do some, uh, some changes. We were trying to improve our continuous integration. And we know that when we can provide more information, you can take better decisions for, uh, for stuff that you can do in your workflow. So let's explain a little bit what is a continuous integration. So imagine like in GitHub, 
your source code is, you have a pull request, some is trying to build, we pass to some testes, and after that, the tests are reported. So you have some report, and it's, everything is green, is, everything is fine, so it's merged to your source code, and you can release it. What we have done with the status report API is an API that you can take this, this information from the external tool and show it in OBS. That means that when your, for example, Travis tells your test is green, in OBS you can show this information. You can see it in the checks that is below, that we have some test with OpenQA that is succeed, another one with a minimal that is pending because it's not finished, and one that is failed. And with this status and with this status report API, we empowered our our staging workflow. Our staging workflow is some kind of CI because you can with that we can take a bunch of summary requests and test all, all together. So for example, here we can see that we can take a lot of packages, a lot of summary requests that you want to integrate in your in your project. You add it in a sub in a staging project that then they start to build and it start it is stated in a in a external CI. With the state with the status report API, you can check if the external have done have finished it and with and have finished it. Sorry, I I forgot this this slide. If has finished it and reported, and if it's green, you can merge it and you can release it. So here we have an example. So, so here you can see the staging workflow. In this case, it's for the for the project test Linux. And I think it looks nice because it's very useful. So with that, what we want is, <laughs> sorry. So with that, you can see that the good point of the staging workflow is that you can take different change, different submit requests that are really different changes from different projects, and you can you can test all them together not like the other CI that you can only test them independently by Y1. So now let's speak a little bit about the future. So right now what we have is that when uh, when some changes occur in our in our in our in our repository, that is the case of GitHub, someone contributes, make a pull request, this pull request is merged. GitHub sent to us a request, and then we start to do stuff. Maybe for example, updating the source, start to rebuilding. But what we, what we cannot do and we want is when something happens in OBS, we should also be possible to, to send an event or send a request to another external tool. For example, in the case of OpenQA, so we want when an event happens in OBS, we can tell to OpenQA, Okay, now you can test. OpenQA is an automated test tool for open system. That could be OpenQA, that could be also Travis, any other kind of, of tool that we want to do. So with this concept, we try to improve the communication with the tools directly. We don't need to any intermediary or any kind of bot or any kind of cron that do stuff in the middle. So we want to connect and talk with the external tools directly. What another improve that we want to do is automatic interface updates in real time. What that means? That means that you not need that you don't need to do any more F5, F5 to get information. So let's have an example. So the, here you can see that the user is interactive with the interface and he talked with the backend and the, but the backend gave him the answer. So if he want to give an update information, he need to refresh again the page or do another action to get the feedback. And in taking a real, a real example, here you can see the build result. That is the package per, per city that is still building from some repository. And if the user wants to know if the build has finished it, he needs to click in the refresh icon that is on the top. And sometimes nothing changes because the backend is still building. You don't have any information. So what we plan to do really is when the backend has something to update, the interface should show the update information. That means that this build is stating that in the, in the bottom, 
should automatically change to succeed if the build will succeed without any interaction from the user. So now, without any interaction. Site rebuild engine. As we, are, as we the team, we are responsible for, uh, for the instance, buildopensuccess.org, and we are, many do, we are doing many and many admin tasks like deployment, debugging, issues looking into the, into the logs, monitoring to different dashboards. And we want to avoid this kind of task and doing things more automated. And automated, <coughs> sorry, and connect, and connect system via software. Regarding to, the, regarding to the deployment, as we are many people doing that and we expect in the future that more people will do, will do the same, will do the same we need to have some kind of, we need to start managing the deployment. So we, we would like to know the current deployment. We will also would like to set deployment in a specific time, or even know what's happened in the, uh, what happened in the past, I mean, the history of the, of the, of the, of the deployment. <coughs> Sorry. Another, another aspect is we also try or maybe think going to the direction to the continuous deployment. That means when a change happens, the deploy are automa we do automatically a deploy. And the, that will provide to us um, more time or be, to be able to focus in more, in more important tasks. <coughs> For having a clear vision what we, of what's happening in the build open I mean the instance that we uh, are in charge right now, we have to increase the monitoring for the application health. For application health, I mean, for example, for example, um, to look performances or to see what's happening there, or what's happening with the with our system. <coughs> and we was, and we also want to be alerted. I mean, to get some notification when something critical happens, to be able to to fix it as, as fast as possible and give you a better service. So for example, right now, oh, we have a performance monitoring for that. We also have tracking, a tracker, is, a tracker exception, but they are all disconnected. I mean, they send to us the same, uh, their own notification. And for us, it's a lit, uh, little, or maybe sometimes very hard to have an overview of the state of what is happening in, in all the place. Maybe the system is down, maybe the user makes something wrong, something happened, and for us it's very difficult to track all this information. So what we want to what we want to do is to work what we want to work is to connect all these tools. Because like I said before, when something wrong happens, like for example the service down, we want to know the we want to know what's happened, and we want to do it to know it the easiest way <coughs> to check what is happening. Ah, sorry, and also to be ensure that we and having this information, we will be, will be will be ah, will be, be can we can that we can fix the problem as fast as possible and give you a better service and bring back the service to its normal state. So in resume, or in summary, what we want is to have an automated, connected, and observable system. And that's all from my, from my side. <laughs> so Frank. Thanks, David. Um, from the backend side, it was really hard for me to find something what might be interesting for the users because uh, we did many improvements in the for the speed of the backend, uh, but mostly most users don't see the, the things we are doing there. Um, so I will concentrate here on the container stuff we did in the last year. Um, we, uh, we replaced uh, Scopio as a tool for our container uploads to a registry. Um, 
we implemented uh, a container unpacking and layer layering um, on the server side and implemented the whole uh, the whole docker registry protocol so OBS now can run as a docker registry natively and a notary so um, this is especially interesting when you run your own instance because this saves a lot of disk space. Um, by this, uh, I don't know who has already used registry OpenSUSE.org. Okay. Um, we now enhance the information uh, which the registry uh, gives in the web front end, especially here, you can see um, that you have a link to your building project where the container is built. And um, now we, you also can choose uh, Podman as your, your tool of choice for uh, using the Docker containers. Yeah, and that's from my side. And now I hand over to Marco. Hello, my name is Marco. Most of, of you might know me from sitting behind those video tables. But besides of that, I'm um, the OSC maintainer and uh, OSC developer. And I make it really short because there is no big news. We are on um, the current version is 165.1. Um, there was six releases since last year, since I hold give, gave the almost same talk on in, in Prague. We have 146 commits since then, which are most, most of them are just small stuff, but nevertheless, 146 commits. And there were two big changes. One is the URL grabber is no longer needed, so we are not dependent on him anymore. And the reason why we are not dependent on him anymore is we are Python 3 compatible since the latest version. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, it, it, it took a long time, but um, at, least we, at least we made it. So I have a lot of free time. No, not, not really. Because the, 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 the next things, uh, we will completely rewrite the password handling because it's a pain in the ass. Um, don't, um, it's not good because uh, if, if you ever have tried using keyring, I don't know, have anyone is, you, is using keyring with, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's possible, but it's, uh, it's not user friendly, let's say it that way. So this will be better than the complete setup process. So the first time you start, um, OSC will be improved so that you get like, you, you have the choice, should, should the password be uh, stored at all, should it be stored in the key ring, something like that. Then um, the documentation, as always, needs to be improved. If anyone is interested in writing documentation, please come to, oh, cool, I will come to you. And um, what I realized while Migrating to Python 3 is that the test coverage in Python and in OSC is not very good. We we test the the base library with uh, where we mock the backend calls, which is with, which was nice because I I used this um, Py 2 to 3 script, run it over OSC, let the test suite run, everything works. I was hey cool, I'm done. Five minutes. I don't know what your problem is. Yeah, but then I started using it and everything broke. So we need better test coverage. We need better way to test, um, like a complete CLI test, not only mocking the back end, but more like testing again against a real back end. Uh, and uh, of course, there will be a lot of Python 3 bug fixes coming. So you will see a lot of uh, releases like 165.1.2.3.4, you name it until the Python 3 branch is completely stable. So if any one of you is, please use the Python 3 branch. I am open to bug reports. I'm happy to receive bugs, because the more bugs I get, the more I can fix, and the stabler, 
the more stable uh, the Python 3 branch gets. So that was from my side. So questions, I, I think this is not just for me, this is for everyone. So if, um, yeah, if someone who is responsible for this talk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I save you. Okay, any question? No? Thank you very much. So, before we leave, please. I forgot one slide in this, in this top, in this table. Wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to do, okay. Don't forget, please, join the beta program. Try org and create issues. And also, review our blog for, the, for more news. Thank you very much.